Before we get into the meat and bones of this conversation, I, I do want to say one thing. I'm really happy for Baltimore Orioles fans this year. I have a couple of friends who are Baltimore Orioles fans, and I actually met one of them at uh, one of the weddings that I was at this summer. And while talking with this person, we were talking about baseball for a while, and I was asking the questions like, wait, how the hell are they this good? What's been the reason? And he brought up Adley Rushman, and he also said, like, you know, it's been a really fun game-washing experience. And it has to do with the guy who's calling the games for the team. The Baltimore Orioles voice is a guy by the name of Kevin Brown. And before I get into this, I'm going to fully admit I am biased because Kevin Brown is one of the first people I met when I went to Syracuse University. We had an orientation deal of some sort. We sat down next to each other. We talked about sports. Didn't know if I was ever going to see him again. Little did I know that he would be a classmate of mine for four years, that he would be doing campus radio with me, campus television with me over the years. And then on top of that, that I would be in a fantasy football league with him for 12 plus years and going. I would be at a couple of weddings that he was at as well. Wonderful guy. And among Newhouse people, which is a subset school at Syracuse University for broadcasting, about as down to earth and not arrogant as it gets. And that's coming from somebody who is at times not down to earth and who at times is extremely arrogant, perhaps for no reason. But he's the voice of the Baltimore Orioles. And this awesome season that the Orioles have been having after last year, we're at the trade deadline. They waved the white flag, seemingly trading Trey Mancini to the Astros. This is a fan favorite guy who had beaten cancer they're in striking distance of a playoff spot they make the long-term move and and look Mike Elias was running the show there and he has done a really good job for Baltimore but this year the season begins and you're looking at how far ahead of in the standings Tampa Bay was of everybody in the AL East and you're, you're not thinking to yourself that Baltimore is going to enter the equation by the end of the year but they have they got some real young talent They've done a lot of cool things this year. But they have a dick for an owner. His name is John Angelos. I had no idea who John Angelos was until earlier this year. I only found out who he was because he actually made himself publicly available to speak to media. And here's the thing about baseball owners. They do silo themselves. They kind of keep themselves up in an ivory tower. And they never actually communicate with their fans. When they do actually have a chance to communicate with people who have questions about the team, of which there are many about Baltimore, how much are you making? How much are you spending on the team? What's going on with a lease that expires at the end of the year that would allow the Orioles, should they choose, to move anywhere? I don't think baseball would approve it, but that is not comforting to people who live in Baltimore given that the Baltimore Colts were stolen from them and moved to Indianapolis in the middle of the night 39 years ago or so today. Maybe not today. I forget when it was. I think it was in the middle of the winter. But that happened. So people in Baltimore are a little sensitive to it. So back on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, John Angelos, the owner of the Baltimore Orioles, met with the media. They asked him questions about all of those things. Here is how he handled that. So I just think, are you from here? Yes, I am. Okay, I just think that we all ought to have a little perspective on what's important in the world. And what's important in the world is what we're talking about, what you're talking about. You can find any garden variety, high value sports team or involvement. You're always going to have some controversy. But I've been very outspoken. I'm very transparent. In fact, in fact, I would invite you and all your colleagues next week, not on Martin Luther King Day. You can come back to this building. You can meet me in this office. I'll take you down on the third floor, and I'll show you the financials of the Orioles. I'll show you the governance of the Orioles. I'll show you everything you want to know. And I'll put all your questions. But today, on MLK Day, I'm not answering any of those questions. 
by the way, he's never done that. This is a lot like Deshaun Watson and the press conference, the multiple press conferences that he's given where he has said, at a later day, I'll tell you my side of the story. I'll tell you what happened. Neither of these people have the intention of sharing anything with you in the future. But imagine as a white sports owner that you're bringing this up as a reason to not answer questions when you finally make yourself available to people who cover the team on a daily basis. And imagine what you're thinking when you deliver an answer like that. What do you think is going to happen when that's the answer you give? Do you think people are going to take your side and say, oh, man, we can't ask him a question today. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Imagine if the world stopped because of the holidays. August 8th. It's International Cat Day. Do you think John Angelos can be asked about what the hell's going on with the voice of his team right now on this International Cat Day? International Allyship Day? National Braiders Day? Digital Nomad Day? National Frozen Custard Day? All of those days are today. Will John Angelos put aside the priorities that we all have on these holidays to actually answer any questions? Obviously not. You thought that was John Angelos, the end of his communication with the public on that Martin Luther King Day where he's not allowed, at least by his own creed, to answer any questions. No, he wasn't done. And props to whoever this reporter is for having the balls to push him. Okay, well, let me just respond very quickly. and say No, no, that, I don't want you to respond. Well, I just, I'm well, not going to entertain those questions on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Which is the day that you set up for us to talk to you. This is the second time that we have spoken to you in four years. Let's openly. take another question. So Let's take, and, another, and, and let me let's finish, take another question. Let me ask one more question here. No, I'm not going to let you ask any more questions because you're highly, it's highly inappropriate on the day, on Martin set, Luther King Jr. Day. I'm going to actually limit it to two more questions so the mayor can make his next obligation, but please continue. You're, you oh. really get some perspective uh, on uh, life, okay? Really. Um, I, oh, hmm. Get some perspective on life. Well, here's some perspective on John Angelo's life. The only reason he's in charge of the Orioles is because his father's been incapacitated since 2017 with advanced stage dementia. And we mentioned a moment ago how the city is uncertain about the Orioles' future there. It's not 100% certain they'll stay there forever because they have yet to make good on a lease that he promised would be done by the All-Star break. By the way, it's not like they're looking for any more state funding. He has somehow stolen $600 million in taxpayer money from Maryland to have Camden Yards renovated. Does he want more? Why hasn't a lease been signed to keep the team in town? And also, this is a guy who has had his own brother sue him and his mother for taking, I think, $60-plus million away from his father, who was incapacitated. So we're talking about perspective on life. Maybe the wrong person to bring this up. And that brings us to what happened with Kevin Brown, my friend, the voice of the Baltimore Orioles. You know, if he got suspended, Kevin did, for saying something either accidentally or purposefully that could be construed as bad by the general public. This is not a topic I would have brought up, to be perfectly honest. But this is the commentary that Kevin got suspended for. This commentary was considered disparaging by little man John Angelos. For the Orioles, Brandon Hyde has felt like this has been maybe the toughest ballpark to play in. But the Orioles have a chance to do something special today. They've already clinched at least a split in the series, winning two of the first three. And they could pick up a series win behind Tyler Wells today. It's been a minute. The Orioles split a two-gamer with the Rays in June. 
they had lost their last 15 series here at Tropicana Field. You have to go back to when our now colleague Brad Brock picked up the win in the series finale June 25th, 2017, the last time the Orioles won a series here at St. Pete. Already got three and two of the chop this year after winning three of 18 the previous three years combined. It is a stark difference, Ben, and it is not a bad Rays team. It's not like all of a sudden the no. Rays uh, became slouches in the American League East. They've led this division every day, but now two, and the Orioles once again are back alone in first place. Yeah, this is legitimately complimentary of where the Orioles are this year, that they've been able to change this because the Rays have been a very good team for the last couple of seasons. And could you hear at one moment there, Kevin Brown say anything remotely critical? I remember seeing that and thinking to myself, there's got to be something else going on here. This doesn't make any sense. And then I watched that clip. And imagine what a small wee-wee complex you must have if you're the owner of the Orioles, and that to you is offensive. And look, this is, a, this is an all-baseball owner thing, and it's a reason you should appreciate Jim Crane because whether it's a successful organization, I grew up rooting for the Boston Red Sox. I don't root for them anymore because their ownership was sensitive about the Patriots getting more attention than them in the midst of that dynasty run with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. The, Baltimore, the, the Seattle Mariners, who I worked at the flagship station for, were notoriously sensitive, and they had no reason to be sensitive. They're the worst baseball team in history. These owners are super sensitive, but they get to remain anonymous because baseball is such a backburner sport to the larger American public. So most of these owners are completely irrelevant. And the best part of all of this is that this dumbass with a small wee-wee, John Angelos, saying all of this, doing all of this, whether it's the Martin Luther King Jr. Day comments, the promise that he made that he would have a lease extended for Baltimore by the All-Star break, which hasn't happened, or suspending a broadcaster who literally just stated facts. This is hilarious because he has Streisand affected himself. Now everybody across sports knows what an absolute baby this loser is. He went after my friend. That guy sucks. The Orioles are lucky to have Kevin Brown. You are lucky to have him. He will probably be at a better place in the near future because of this. And what did you think was going to happen? Did you think this was never going to get out in 2023? It's fun to see little rich boys sometimes get stuffed into a locker by themselves. And that's exactly what John Angelos did. And I hope the Astros kicked this team's ass over the next couple of days. So John Angelos has to cry a little bit.